So, what is going on, uh, individuals of the watching Bando variety? My name is Bando. You may remember me from twitch.tv slash bando.com. Wait, no. I don't know. Uh, today is the 21st of June, 19, 2021. I'm, I'm in a bit of a... What's the... What would I describe the mood of today? A bit of... Self, self going? Is that, I don't know. I feel like the batteries on my uh, controller are a bit weak. So I think I'm gonna wing plugging it in. We're gonna see how we go. Because uh, I had a bit of a terrifying moment last week when uh, when the controller unplugged and RetroArch was like, yeah, I'm gonna close now, so. Is that? Um, I've got a few stories for this week. Uh, it's it's been a bit of a wild time, a bit of an interesting, just like I don't know, a few few things that have happened that I've been like, ah, okay, okay, so sure. cool, cool, I guess. Um, so anyway, let's dive into the game. Uh, Where is it? There we go. So, first thing I just want to mention is, uh, for those who have paid a bit of attention to my Twitter feed, um, uh, you'll notice that the VOD for, uh, last week's stream got recently re-uploaded today on my channel. For the, those of you watching, you're probably, you may have noticed if you were watching the VOD, um, Sony Music Entertainment uh, detected this very song that is playing right now uh, called Oneet. They own the publishing rights. This van keeps just appearing midway in the road. You see that? Hey, oh, okay. Um, they own the rights to the song. Uh, at least they've published it physically. They've content ID'd it. Sure, okay. And they have determined that it's their copyright. Now, fair enough. But what I can say is that, okay, well, I'm playing, like, the the video, the purpose of the video is not to, you know, not to necessarily just pirate your music, your, your hard-earned music, but it's to provide a running commentary on the game, as well as, you know, some other topics, sure. Uh, there's critique of the game, there's discussion of it, there's a lot of stuff involved with uh, the things that I try and talk about. Uh, so I would have considered it to, to be fair use. And every single time that I've had content ID stuff hit me on YouTube, it's usually been a very silent process of me just going, okay, well, no, it's a, it's a commentary on it. And I'm critiquing the game, like, you know, whatever. And usually it passes. And the nice thing is that YouTube has done steps such that whatever you do provide, uh, you do file a counterclaim on your thing, all the revenue starts to get pulled. This was a change that I remember people suggesting way on the back. And I don't know where I'm going right now. Uh, I think there's a police station. I forgot where the police station was. This, we'll keep trying everything. Drug store, it's to the east. Okay, we'll keep walking around. Uh, so, but this time Sony Music said, no, it's not fair use. What are you doing is not fair use. Now, you know, we can start going down a, a road of what's what's fair use and what's not, especially given, you know, the way that I've discussed um, my, you know, my content. You know, where the sun rises. Uh, but I think, just to, just to be a bit spiteful, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to constantly mention the music every five minutes, and I'm going to keep trickling some information about the music in the context of the game. And I'm just gonna keep doing it because then I can go, hey, this is a, you know, this is a critique of your work. You know, so I, in order to demonstrate that there is indeed a, 
I, I mean, I know, I know, this is not how copyright necessarily works, because it's not like I can provide a two-hour loop of the music and then partially, you know, critique on it some of the time. I'm going back. I have no... Oh, well, there's a police station. Cool. So, um... So in this case, uh, let's, I don't know what this music track is called, thanks Sony Music Entertainment, uh, but it's uh, got this wonderful tone of, uh, you know, this very, like, boxed in, um, because there's only three voices going on, you've got this, boom, 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 boom. it's like a muted trumpet, you've got this bass line, some weird chords over the top, and I heard, like, a buzzing sound, you know, bizarre, <laughs> bizarre tones, you know? Uh, which is the theme of the game. There's a lot of bizarrity, a lot of, uh... <laughs> this is really hard. I don't know how I'm gonna keep this up the whole stream. So, point is, is that, like, yeah, if, if Sony freaking copyrights me, I'll just be like, bro, like, I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm trying to do this stuff. Like, I understand content ID systems are gonna hit you on that one. I also don't know what's going on with that dialogue. It's been too busy lately. Why is the road of Tucson closed? An emergency, of course. At times like this, kids like you should be playing Nintendo games. Anyway, are you sure you want to go to Tucson? Yeah, okay. Follow me. <laughs> Show me what you got. See if you can get past five of my best men. Uh... Yeah. Oh my gosh, jeez. Okay. Uh, so we got this wonderful music, which is consisting of this, uh, major tonality. I- it reminds me of, um, uh, I think there's maybe, like, a surf rock kind of motif or something. It turned back to normal, like, what happened? Uh, and just as a critique of the music as well, there's also, uh, you know, I- I appreciate there's multiple, like, victory little jingles. You think this game is, uh, rather ahead of its time because you get attacked by cops? For doing a bit of vigilante justice yourself? It's a bit too topical, isn't it? I've got a couple of topical things on my list, but, uh, how about let me talk about, um, uh, a game that I played last Sunday, and I didn't have the time to really talk about it. Um, and that is called, uh, The Beginner's Guide. This is a... This is a game... Man, I just... Like, at least I can, like, spam heal myself pretty okay, but... Jeez, this is a bit brutal. Uh, so The Beginner's Guide is a game by the guy who made, um... Uh... The Stanley Parable. It's a... That's a walking sim game that plays a lot of... A lot of, kind of poking fun at uh, game design and how it leads you into believing certain things and how it encourages you to play certain behaviors. Um, nuclear suplex attack. Um, so the beginner's guide is a little bit along that lines, but the tone is completely different. So instead of, um, instead of being uh, just a walking sim about games on that kind of level, it's a walking sim uh, involving, uh, the story of the guy who made the game. I'm gonna hope fictionalize, because you'll, you'll see where I go. And, uh, he met this one guy who had these real interesting, like, small games he made that were basically their own walking sims. I love how that guy just buggers off. Super Ultra Mambo Tango Foxtrot Martial Arts. Uh oh, his offense went up by one. Should I be concerned? There he goes. Eh, I don't trust myself on that one. At least you get a lot of health at this point. You've got like barely any health when you start. And then it's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit decent. And then you heal 92. Well, there he goes. And now I'm level 13. Wow. I love how this game suddenly gets a bit generous. 
I didn't think you, you would do so well against the mighty one at police force. You want me to open the road to Tucson? Hang on for a sec. I'll radio my staff and give them the word. Beep beep. Click. Click. Strong, do you read me? Oh, it's me, Craft and Strong. Okay, listen, the kid named Ness will be there in a few minutes. He's a kid in a red cap. I want you to open the road to Tucson for him. I know that. I know that. Don't ask me why. Just do it. That's an order. Strong out. Cool. Well, kid, I'm not going to question you now, but I do want to see you again. Good luck. Alright. Okay, sure thing. Uh, so... So, yeah, so the beginner's guide simply tells a story of the narrator's experience with a person and their, uh, their ventures into making source maps and games that kind of deal around with the source engine. Uh, they're very simple games. Uh, none of them are really more beyond walking and interacting and maybe there's a small dialogue system that's just you pressing one, two, or three. Like, there's really not much going on. Um, but, however, uh, the main gist of the game is that it's a narrative experience. It's about, uh, some people will say two hours. I would say definitely an hour and a half, and it took me a little under an hour and a half because I decided to be a little bit, uh, gang-ho with being a rebel. Um, uh, so let's say that. And are you gonna hit the hay? No! I'm gonna keep going. Um... So it's it's his narrative experience around that. Um, basically, uh, do a bit of a minor spoiler talk because you can't really talk about the game without dropping like the game because it's too short and there's not really any mechanics to talk about. So all I can say is that it's just a narrative experience, and to that, I felt sorely disappointed that the narrative uh, experience actually like you know started to really get on me. It didn't feel very, oh my gosh, I'm more powerful than all the bees. I live rent free in the mouse's house. The mice are known as the exit mice. They're very kind, and boy are they fast. I really love these guys. Oh, do I get... What? Cool. Cool. Okay. Hamburger, cheeseburger, whopper. So, I, I I gotta beware being a bit silent or else Sony's gonna get me on that one. Uh, so... Alright, so, dropping the spoilers of the game, uh... I guess, I don't really know how I'll indicate that the spoilers are done. How about I'll open and... I'll say no problem here like three times. How about that? That'll be your cue. Okay? Uh, so... The, um... The gist of the game is that the narrator, uh... Thinks that the guy is kind of curious. And so what he does is that he wants to share his games and tell the story about him. Um... In doing so, he goes, okay, there's some things that, uh... Ah, oh, I got mushroomed. Ah, oh, gosh. Okay, so the worst part about being mushroomed is that your directions start to change on you for reference and you can't go... Oh, and you get attacked all the time. Um, and you sometimes hit yourself in battle. And I'm pretty sure like the only way to really relieve it is to just walk back. Walk back all the way. Um, which isn't too bad because you're gaining experience, but... Yeah, it's gonna get a bit irritating for me later. I don't remember there being this many mushrooms when I walked through the first time. Okay. Uh, so... Yeah, so the game's about that, but, uh, it doesn't, um... So, the guy introduces some of the games and goes, Oh, like, you know, some of this game design's a bit weird, isn't it? He's got this shooter game, and he's got this gun that shoots, but you can't reload and there's no enemies. And then there's a maze. And he was like, Oh, you know, the maze is kind of obnoxious. I'll just skip you past it. And so when I played the game, I was like, Oh, I want to see the maze. What if there's, like, something hidden in there or something like that? And I went back, and I went through the maze, and I realized, yeah, there's nothing in there. And now my controls are rotated. Cool. Cool. 
Uh, hospital, that's where you gotta go. So, for reference, they're rotated and... No, they're just rotated. They are just rotated. <laughs> kind of irritating. Um... fun part is not walking out of here. Hi there. Oh. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going. Oh, and the controls change on me again. Nice. They may not believe I'm healing if you have some illness. It's my job to care. Hey, now that I notice, could you send me the mushroom growing on top of your head? Let's make a deal. And he actually gives you 50 bucks for it. Which is cool. So, that's cool. Um, so there's another point later where he's got this game where you have to go up a flight of stairs. And the meme that, he, that the original game designer has is that going up the stairs, uh, you start to move slower and slower. And so, so he's like, oh, like I put in the button to make you go faster. I decided to wing it out. I decided to just like, Walk up the flight of stairs at the speed five. What? What's the five? What's the five? <laughs> so yeah, I just decided to walk up the flight of stairs. Nothing really too much with it. Come on, Monty Mall. I'm not an enemy. I'm just a friendly mall. I'll tell you how to distinguish between your friends and enemies. Enemies look like humans with weird color faces. But wherever them. However, you can't get. Should I really judge humans because they have funny looking faces? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I decided to wing going up the flight of stairs, only to then realize that I had to continue walking so much further down. I was like, oh, okay. But point is to set, I didn't really like how this guy was just, like, changing the rules. He was just going like, ah, oh, just, just press the button and skip it. Well, D, I don't know anything else. <laughs> cool. Two Sun Town. It's weird that it takes, like, no effort to get the Two Sun as well. Uh, might as well go to the hotel and give it a save, just so I'm over here. I don't know why... I guess you could just save. Welcome to Susan Hotel. Cost you 50 bucks. Well, look at that. Look what I've got. 50 bucks. Cool. Oop. Oop. My friend that you have never met before. My name is Paula. Paula Dean. Can you hear me calling you? I am Paula. That's a wonderfully, like, subtle way of introducing a character into your game, right? How about reading the newspaper before you go? Ghost found to inhabit tunnel to Threed. Um... So, yeah, I started to get a bit irritated with the narrator guy kind of changing the rules on you. Uh, eventually when you go through the game, you start to realize that, uh, he... That the games start getting a bit more, uh, sinister, ominous. And so I started going, okay, so what's the twist? What's the twist? Like, this guy keeps talking about this one guy who keeps forcing his games on. Uh, or, or forcing him to, like, you know, like, oh, you should really get into games and stuff. And, and he's just, like, making these, you know, games that seem more, uh, introverted. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Pictures taken instantaneously. Cool. What a great photograph. It'll bring back the fondness of memories. Cool. So, yeah, I, I started being led to one of two conclusions. Either that this guy... And this guy, like, he started, like, trying to justify himself. This is a cycle shop. Punctual. Bicycles are so fun and so convenient. It's a lot faster than walking. You'll be really popular with the biking crowd. Do you want a bicycle? Unfortunately, we don't have any more bikes for sale. Only rentals. Do you want to rent one? I really like your straightforward style. I'll tell you what. I'll let you borrow a bike for free. You got too many items, though. <laughs> Cool, cool and acceptable. Um, <laughs> the cookies are kind of worthless, so I'm, go I'm gonna ditch a cookie. All right. All right, give me the bike. So. So 
So I think the meme with the bicycle, or the, the gist of the bicycle, is that uh, I can go to my goods, I can go bicycle, and I can use it. And I legitimately go on it. It keeps moving you forward. I'm pretty sure Pokemon decided, hey, bicycles are cool. It's not particularly faster than walking though, is it? Yeah, I guess. Um, so, yeah, so one of two outcomes, I thought. Either this main, this narrator guy was the guy who made you know, he, he's just an unreliable narrator, and he's just going, like, he's he's claiming that there's this other guy who's making these weird games, but it's really him, and it's just like a cry for help. I was thinking it was something like that. Or, he feels really guilty because, uh, I'll just say that the the narrator guy, sorry, the, the guy who made the games, uh, made a tragic decision of some variety. Um... And it turns out I was wrong on both fronts, slightly, uh, and it turns out that the guy just wanted to, to get out of his life because he's a jerk. And I was like, I knew he was a jerk the whole time. Was that it? That was it? He's just a jerk? He's just an unreliable narrator who's been modifying this guy's games and instead of abiding by his, his request to not have his freaking, like, game shared with people, he decides to make a game about his games. Uh, ooh, I can get better bat. You can't exactly compare the items. Can you? Like, I guess I've got a cracked bat. I guess I can also look up the, the weapons, can't I? So I guess the next one is uh, the T-ball bat, which could be okay, but I don't know. Maybe I'll just find one later. And they got the teddy bear, which I can't remember what it does off the top of my head, but sure. Uh, so point is, it's like I got a bit peeved off with the beginner's guide because this was a game that I had gone in expecting that it was like a, not a mystery puzzle, but just like, you know, some interesting game where you'd have to dig through the files and uncover what really happened. But then, reading more about it, and kind of going through it again, I realized that I had seen everything on a first playthrough. It was a story that was told at you, and that's it. And I didn't feel invested as a main character, because I didn't do anything. I just walked through his levels, got told that he didn't want me to play these levels, and then... And then, uh... Yeah, I also thought he was a bit pretentious when he was like, oh, there must be some deeper meanings. Like, why did he put a light, like, lamppost at the end of the levels? It must be like a bright, you know, a source of light, a source of resolution. And I'm like, bro's freaking slapping together source maps. You think he really, like, cares about the deep intricacies of the symbolism of the items he's using in? Like, and this is, this is a problem I have, is that by mentioning it, the game loses the effect of it. And I'm curious if the beginner's guide would have been better as... text. As a write-up. As in, it's a bunch of levels. I could have just gone to this guy, couldn't I? I totally could have. Uh, it, it could have been just a, a write-up of, of a bunch of... Blah. <laughs> Could have been a write-up of a bunch of levels, and that's it. Instead, it's this game. It's a game they have to pay, like, it's a decent amount. I don't know when I got it. Probably like a humble bundle. Can't go to the bus in the tunnel. Actually, a lot going on, jeez. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it fell flat on me. Now, I think... There's some merit in the game. I don't think it's an absolute, like, failure in the sense of, like... You know, it, it got me gripped and I'm playing it. But I didn't... <laughs> I kind of... I, I didn't feel emotionally manipulated to care. I actually wanted this guy to, like, you know... To just, like, to stop talking, basically. I don't know, it, it really didn't click with me. And just me playing the end of the game. Now wait a minute, I could give you a great hint for just 
No, not really. So you're telling me that you don't want to hit. You're either awfully confident or $50 is too much to pay. Anyway, a young man like you is very unusual these days. Cool. Cool. Um... Like, yeah, I, I don't know necessarily, but I... Granted, I feel like I've not been moved too much by video game stories in the sense of, like, when they really get you. There's a couple of games out there. I think Spec Ops The Line, legit, is, you know, probably the strongest narrative experience that I've ever had in a game. Um, I think it's because, like, Spec Ops The Line doesn't end. Like, it ends, it, it's a game, it's got, it's got its structures, it's got its levels, but like, it gets boring, not boring, it gets repetitive quickly. Oh, the New Age Retro Hippie. And Sony, for reference, uh, this music is definitely along the lines of that 50s rockabilly mindset. Uh, you know, it's got the wonderful 12 bar blues kind of, you know, walking bass. Uh, going on, uh, upbeat tempo, the instrumentation is actually rather simple as well because it is only the three voices, it's the drums, it's the bass, and it's the guitar going on in there, so it's just a, um, uh, you know, very classic in that mindset, but I think how awfully simple it is and how short a loop it is as well, isn't it? Like, it doesn't re-loop, does it? It is, yeah, it is just that, so... Perhaps it plays towards that simplicity of the 50s mindset. It's like, I don't know, I, I'm really pushing it, like... Like, how do you play through a game and then you have to constantly commentate on the music? Is that, is that, is that the standard that apparently I have to go with? And also, I love how it's like, oh, Two Sons music, oh, don't need to, don't need to commentate on it. But, gosh, it's... That's a bit frustrating. That's rather frustrating. We got a lot of items here. Sure. I don't have a map of the place, so I really don't know, like, what exactly I'm doing, but sure. Why don't we chat li <laughs> later after we locked horns? Ah, my gosh. Uh, I don't trust this guy. I'm going for him. Oh, he knitted his brow. He's got a cool background. And he bites? Oh, he's, he's gotten it close with the biting. Alright, he's back to normal. Cool. Whoa, that's a lot of experience. And I've got Paralysis Alpha. Cool. Yes, I'm Evadrid, boss of Berglin Park. When I jumped off the roof, I twisted my ankle. Anyways, I lost, and nothing will change that. You know, you're pretty strong. Yeah, I know that you want to find out about a girl named Paula. She went off to a secret hideout in the peaceful Rest Valley. A chubby boy and a weird guy in a blue outfit have kidnapped her, though. They said that they were t gonna make Paula some sort of human sacrifice. They were definitely hardcore strange. You know, she might be gone already. You'd better hurry. If you say Paula, be sure to come back here, okay? Don't forget. Cool. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so, I don't know, the beginner's guide didn't necessarily cut it for me. I feel a little bit robbed as well because, yeah, as I said, I th the game's trailer really made it look like it was a dig through the files and piece together your own narrative experience, and possibly, uh, I was hoping that there was some cool narrative, sorry, cool kind of gameplay concept of opening up different games and they may be on different states or different, you know, kind of... Uh, you know, you'd have to launch up multiple games, maybe it utilizes uh, a very unused part of Windows, which is the, um, the fact that the window position on the screen is sent to the program, so you could maybe use it as like a viewport into something rather than being, um, you know, just like a game or something like that, or maybe it knows that it's been opened up after other games. Because, like, we've all, you know, you've played, like, people have played something like, uh, uh, Undertale or Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, I don't know if Doki Doki Literature Club actually does. I know there's games out there where it's like they, you know, they, they meta on the fact that they're on a computer, which is good fun for Undertale, because I don't know how it on, on earth it works on consoles. Um, what is this? What is this guy? The annoying old party man. Don't 
Turn back to normal. Kid needs to beat him up in order for him to see some sense in the world. Sure, okay. I am very caught out on this side of the river. I love how this river has to just, like, stop at some point. Just... I don't know. Let's check out this place. Oh, there's it. She's on the left. I don't know where she went. Cat on the roof. I love these signs in a lot of, like, old-timey games. When I grow up, I just want to be just like Paula. A lot of people like this Paula. Well, I want to play with Paula, but she's gone somewhere. Paula is like a mother to me. You may not be able to comprehend my emotions. I might have a baby face, but I possess the mind of an adult. I beg your pardon. What? What's the whistle anywhere? It makes me smile all the while. I'm Paula's mother. I'm busy taking care of these kids. You shouldn't worry about Paula. She has a guardian angel, it seems. Okay, sure. Um... So yeah, instead, the game... The Beginner's Guide game basically was... Oh my gosh. The the game was just the walkthrough. There wasn't really anything to see on a second run-through. It does have the... Um, the benefit of having the original game... Meh, I don't know about original. But it's got the game's source files. Like, the map source files. Um, and uh, it's... It's, uh, I guess interesting that they're there, but there's not too much to really gain from it beyond just, like, some fun, you know, script names and comments that are in it, but nothing too fancy. Um, and that was it. That That's the whole game. So, I felt rather disappointed. Um, and, I don't know, I I was gonna make a, 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 a talk about, like, all the E3 stuff, and I remember it's like, oh, they showed off, you know, the, the beginner's guide. And it, uh, I played it and then it didn't wow me. It, it actually was rather disappointing for me. Um, I wonder if I can return the bike, because I've got a, a guy on my, my thing now. Um, nope. Weird looking individual. What's up? Uh,. So that's a, a segue to the remaining bits of E3. Uh, there were a few things I remember talking about uh, up to the Microsoft and the Square Enix conference. There was not too many other games that uh, ended up getting shown off, but the big conference that uh, I did not get to talk about was um, Devolver, who I... No, I did mention Devolver. I don't know. Uh, so I didn't... I didn't watch any of the, the PC gaming uh, thing or uh, some of the other ones, uh, but I do know that there's a Jurassic World Evolution 2, so I know that off the top of my head. Um, I know that there's a Sonic Colors uh, port coming to Steam, isn't it? You're right, buy a bicycle? We don't have any more right now. Can I just get rid of it? That is going to rot an inventory space. Oh boy. <laughs> At the very least, I know, th and this is a very, like, traditional JRPG in the sense that uh, your inventory is tied to the number of party members. I know that's that's the case. So the moment we get someone else, uh, then it's all going to be good. Um... But no, the, the obvious big one that I didn't talk about because it hadn't happened when I streamed last was uh, Nintendo's conference. And they talked about quite a number of games. Um, they had a good conference. I don't think it was necessarily as, like, slam dunk out of the park as Microsoft's, but also, like, it's not really a competition. And also, the orange kid. The apple kid. I wonder what's in the orange kid's house. Ah! Cactus. I'm Orange Kid, the inventor. Have you heard of me? I'm a bit embarrassed about my reputation. I have a lot of inventions in development, but I'm running short of cash. I'm basically a happy-go-lucky person, so I'm not worried. You know, I'm working on this machine. That would really help you in peaceful Rest Valley. I hope it's ready soon. What? You're actually willing to help finance the project? Uh... Probably not. 
200 bucks. No. Sure. Well, I sort of neglected to do my housework. I know it's a bit of a pig slide, but anyway, I'm Apple Kit. I haven't taken a bath in quite a while, so I may be kind of stinky. By the way, I'm starving. Do you have something to eat? If you do, can I have some? Sure. Uh, I wish I didn't drop all my cookies, but you can have a hamburger. Thanks, you seem very nice. Uh, I wonder if maybe you'd like to invest some money in my inventions? Sure. Excuse me, I mean, thank you, by the way. I could really use 200 bucks. Yes, I don't deny money. Go ahead, make yourself comfortable anyway. You can plop down anywhere. Nice. Well, time to go back and get 200 bucks from the closest ATM, which I think is at the department store. Nice. Long walk back. Uh, but yeah, no, Nintendo had a few things to show off. Um, I think the, the biggest announcement uh, was in the middle when they talked about Metroid Dread. Um, as a long time for a while Metroid fan, I do really appreciate... Uh, you know, the idea of a new Metroid game in a style that is very similar to the old ones. Um, I wonder if this is Nintendo leaning more towards let's make a game that's just like, I mean, it seems like a Metroid game. It's got one aspect of it and that's it's got that like cloaking mechanic. But other than that, it does seem like a 3D, oh, and, and also being able to aim with the right stick. Just that seemed to be something that like, me playing way too many 2D Metroids, I was like, oh, you, you, can, you can aim in that direction without having to stand still like Samus Returns, so... Uh, I'm giving this guy 200 bucks, huh? Okay, he's... look at him. Seems like you're expecting something from me. Maybe you'd like to invest some money in my inventions? Yes, yes! Oh, excuse me, I mean, thank you, by the way, I could really use 200 bucks. Thank you, I won't let you down. Oh. Hi there, mouse. I'm a mouse. No one has given me a name yet. You took care of my master. In return, I want to give you this. Please take it and say nothing. So you get the receiver phone. So I believe this is this is a phone anywhere, isn't it? Yeah. Oh no, receiver calls. Cool. Pfft. Never mind. My brain is bad. Ah, uh, gosh, this is a bit of a walk, isn't it? What's with the sevens? What did I do? I'll never understand. I'll never understand. <laughs> Gosh, this butterfly. Excuse me, butterfly. Excuse me. Excuse me, butterfly. Come on, butterfly. Come on. <laughs> bit, of, uh, bit of a brutal walk, isn't it? Alright, so anyway. like butter fingers because I can't get him. Uh, the other other ether things. I don't have a lot to say about Metroid. I don't, I don't know. It, it, it seems to be just very much like Metroid and that's a general trend that yeah I found with all the all the um the E3 related things is that there were a lot of games that were games in a franchise that obviously just seemed like games in a franchise and didn't really show why they were sequels or what they did. Um, I think there's a lot of, like, I mean, that's fine for games that are, where's the game? <laughs> uh, that's fine for games where, like, okay, it's, um, you dispose the cave, oh my gosh. Um, I love how I solidify because he brushes his teeth. Ooh. Oh no. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, there were a lot of games that were sequels, and this is a bit of a cynical view of mine, but like, 
Um, I think Metro Dread is a perfect example where it's like, if I didn't know if you're gonna keep being up the same people, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I walked ov over in this direction expecting to see something else and instead I just joined back onto the same road, so. I can keep beating up the same people. They are, they are drunk businessmen, so. It's a long road though. It's just a hunch, but I think the ghosts in the tunnel don't like anything upbeat and cheerful. When I was driving in the tunnel, I was playing some grooving tunes and the ghosts moved slower. I think the ghosts can't stand anything positive. Hey, would you beat up a drunk businessman yourself? Woo! Go back! Woo! I'm obviously listening to these ghosts. Woo! Woo! Uh-oh. Whoop! Cool. Okay, well, I'm not going that way. <laughs> the cranky lady! And she's dead. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, what's another, yeah, what's another E3 game? Um, they, there was the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer. It looks good. There, I, again, like, there was a lot of, like, this is what makes Breath of the Wild game. I thought that would turn you into a ghost. Oh, maybe. That wouldn't be, I mean, if you ask for it, maybe. Yeah, also they hit the, the teddy bear. It's like substitute. There's a lot of Pokemon moves that were just directly inspired by just things in this game. Uh, partially because the development team was kind of the same, but... I mean, yeah, the idea of the, the teddy bear to basically tank your hits, that is literally just substitute, which is... First hand Pokemon move, so... There's that. Uh, I think we gotta go this way, yeah. Hi there, guy. I hear that the girl named Paula was kidnapped while helping out the Polestar Preschool. Polestar is such a... ...wonderful name. Or it's... Polesta. Ah, oh, this butterfly's easy to get. Uh... Quite a few other games. Uh... The Advance Wars... Remake... Port... That's an R1 as well, is it? Like, as someone who has played Advance Wars 1. What's the... What, what do I get out of this? Rambling Evil Mushroom and a Mobile Sprout. I think the Mobile Sprout is, uh... Gonna be pain because of the shares, but then the... No, the Mushroom's gonna Mushroom me. He's gonna Shroom me. He's gonna get me. What do you do? Uh, what are some other ones? Fatal Frame, that's a port of a Wii U title, I think people forgot. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5, that's one. I've not played any of them, but... You know, people... <laughs> I wonder how many journalists out there don't realize that that's the same franchise as Persona. I don't know. Uh, the WarioWare looks good. Um, oh, the, the Shin Megami Tensei trailer was really funny for me because... Literally, it started with, I'm just an average high school girl in Japan, and suddenly I'm in alternate Tokyo. And, like, it just sounds so, like, just off-brand and hilarious for me. I, <laughs> I don't have much to say about that one. Um, the gameplay looks fine, though. I, if anything, I'd probably pick it up. I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's a good game. Usually they're good games. Uh, let's go for a heal and... Oh, that's not the heal. That wasn't heal. Whoops. Sure. Okay. Uh, everything else there was kind of games that already existed, or Mario Golf, which is coming out very shortly, or the Mario Party Superstars, which hopefully they don't pick the worst boards in the game, but... Uh, the descriptions make it seem like they picked five boards, which is less than any of the games, and I used the wrong ability, and you consume the PP anyways. I don't know why I'm... Really missing out on that. Um, humdy dumdy dum da dum. I'm hunting for mushrooms. I'm gonna collect a ton. Well, uh, how much does a mushroom weigh? Uh, 
Two halves, I think. Oh, uh, did I get him on that one? I don't even know. Little UFO. Hit, hit me with that laser beam. Consume the PP anyways. Oh, exactly. Sometimes people go, you know, they become fine again. That mobile sprout stopped moving. He's gone. He's out of that. Whoa. Hi there, mole. I'm not an enemy. I'm just a regular mole. Would you like to know how to survive battles? No. Well, you seem to know already, even if you don't look like it. <laughs> Thanks. Look at the Kool-Aid motion. It's purple. It's not Kool-Aid. Oh, crazy UFO. Crazy UFO. I feel lazy. I didn't necessarily kill anyone, did it? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cop it a bit. Ah, there it is. There it goes. Ness, it looks like you suck. Uh, oh, where's my stats? There it is. No PP. This game is kind of brutal. It is kind of brutal. But also, like, all your money seems to just, like, go into the ATM, rather than, like, on hand. It... It's weird, like, because you can only buy things in person, but... Sure, okay. That's okay, give it an opportunity to heal. I'm getting stuck there. So what? Huh? Pardon? Jeez. Hmm? You're annoying! Dang me! Yeah, yeah! Ahahaha! Uh -huh. Hey you! Later days, pal! Ha uh ha! -huh. It's so hot today. It rocks. Is it cold today? Uh huh. See ya. Here, get yourself a juice or something. There you go. Robbed a guy in broad daylight right there. <laughs> so yeah, I I don't think there's really anything else. There was the Guardians of the Galaxy game again. Uh oh wait, did they air that afterwards? No, 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 no. I, I talked about that before, yeah. Um, Smash Bros. character, like, sure. If there's one thing, I'm actually a bit tired of, like, Smash Bros. announcements now. Like, it's been going on for so long that the news and the anticipation is like, man, it's been like... We were doing this back in the Wii U days, and then the moment the Wii U game was, like, finished, the Switch one was, like, just, you know... On the table and it came out like really soon and then we're back to you know months of waiting and then a new character and then months of waiting and then a new character and that's that's fine it's it's all okay there but like geez man I, I got tired about like X character confirmed for smash I think there is one one more slot and then that's it they're done they're gone see ya uh, but do you know what I mean like I don't know I find I find a post-launch announcements to get tiring at places. Um, and it's weird, because, like, I'm more accepting of a game that, like, comes out much later. Uh, sorry. It comes out, and then it gets these expansions and these, uh, you know, like, cool content updates much later in its life. Uh, so games like Postal 2, um, that's got a funny one. There was another one. Something like Duke Nukem 3D, maybe. You want to throw the... Ah, I don't need it. We'll leave the ketchup packet behind. I'm holding that right, by the way. You can't even heal it, bro. You can't even heal it. I gotta run back to the hospital. I wonder if there's more mushrooms when you've got a mushroom on your head. I feel like that's the case. I don't remember there being this many mushrooms. It seems rather odd, but sure. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't I don't have anything really else. I don't think there was anything else. Oh, cruise and blast. Ooh, that actually reminds me, that's a wonderful tangent. So I went to a local time zone because uh, here in New South Wales, we have some uh, government sanctioned dine and discover vouchers. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna use 25 bucks on my local time zone and let's let's uh, play some games. So I went to my local time zone and I realized there's a lot of, uh, not Haymarket, um, up up at uh, Hornsby, uh, near me. So, uh, yeah, I, I went up, I shelled some money onto a card and then realized that uh, there's only a few, like, there's a lot of those, like, prize games, you know, like the, the wheels spin one, uh, the just whack-a-mole one for the, where is the hospital? And now my controls are the right way around. Let's keep looking around for the hospital. Maybe I can pull up a map on my end. Uh, so, there, there we go, map one. Easy. Um, yeah, there, there were, there were a lot of machines that were not quite, like, the ones that I'd play. Um, that being said, I went immediately for, you know, my heart and soul, uh, and that's Daytona USA. This was Daytona 3, which I had tried playing through the, uh, means that, Sega accidentally opened up to the world. They, they, uh, Sega at some point issued a patch, uh, to fix some bugs, and, uh, the patch was the entirety of the game, and, uh, it was just free on their website for, like, months. It was rather bizarre, and the game just runs on Windows, uh, 10. Maybe 7, actually. It might have been built for 7. Um, it doesn't exactly have the most convenient interface, so it didn't like my, um, my wheel when I tried playing it then, so... Um... But that being said, I, I played it. I played, uh, 3.7 Speedway twice, and then Dinosaur Valley once, and... I... I didn't win? <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, it probably makes sense that it doesn't like my control that much. Um, that being said, like, I've figured out how, um... There's a Model 2 emulator that actually, like, works properly with... Um... Yeah, yeah, the, the sim experience is probably the best. Uh, I can't get used to, like, the seat is really, like, close to the, um... To the... Like, the top of the pet. What is... What is this guy? The unassuming local guy? Oh my gosh. Ah, I'm being beat up by the local guy. Ah, jeez. Um... Yeah, The Sim was... it... I mean... It, how do I phrase it? It's, it is it is remarkably faithful to the original. I I don't know if there were any settings tweaked. Uh, I'd imagine the time difficulty was lowered because I feel like I was able to make mistakes and then still end with a lot of time left. Um, so I'm, I wasn't too fussed with that, but I, it was a bit trickier to gain positions. Uh, and one issue I had was that every time I try and... Um, or like I'd hit something, it would take forever to build up speed again. Like, absolutely so long. Like, I'd lose maybe like four seconds every time I touched anything. Um, and that's kind of, that kind of hurts because like I'm trying to overtake, only to then hit an AI and now have absolutely no way to overtake. Um, so it... <laughs> It got a bit rough. Uh, also, classic Daytona gets a bit tricky with um, the like how much how drifting works because the game it punishes you for full maxing the the steering wheel. You're not like you're not supposed to be like full turning it. Uh, you're supposed to basically like tap the brakes, flick the wheel, and then like go go sideways and control it such that you don't spin out. I love how I'm losing all my PP in one fell swoop. There you go, okay. And then he heals anyways. Like, sure. 
There you go. Well, that was rather obnoxious. I'm not going to get lucky with the butterfly coming out at me again, am I? Is the butterfly going to reappear there? Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe they always appear there. So, uh, the other thing that kind of bummed me out is that, like, I played that, and then I also played a bit of Time Crisis 4, um, at the arcade, and, uh, in both of those games, I could not put in a name for myself at the end. It, uh, I think Daytona, it only lets you put in an, I swear it let you put in a name if you finished, and not if you won, or not if you came, like, in the top three. I swear they didn't, like, they let you put in your name anyway, so... Point is, I finished, but eh. time crisis. So, time crisis is is pretty crazy. Time crisis two, I remember seeing a ton as a kid. Um, this was four. It looks like it came out maybe in the later two thousands. Uh, not exactly the highest quality game of that time period. Um, I love how I got the first hit on this guy, by the way. But I, I'll take it, I guess. And then I miss anyway. So, <laughs> does it count? I'm gonna lose all my all my pee pee. Heels anyway. What's the point? Um, I'll definitely say Time Crisis Four was a was a workout on my leg. Like, cause like I'm 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 leaning on my left leg such that I can be lying on my right foot to lean in and out. Um, I don't think they tweaked any of the settings on this one though. It was remarkably brutal on the time limits so you'd have so many hits uh, that you could take and running out of time takes a hit uh, you can and the time limit is like per like scene and there is a giant pencil in the way there's a giant pencil right in the way cool uh, so I guess we're gonna wander back now. And there's, there's a fellow over there. Where's all the enemies? There were a ton of enemies back here. Sure, okay. Oh, here we go. UFO's coming at me. Um, I don't know if there was something going on, but I felt like my shots were a little bit over on the, like, they shot more to the left than they should have. Um, it made it a little hard to uh, to accurately hit things, but I could kind of play the relative game. Um, so that's okay. Um, I don't know, maybe it was also just me not. I can heal a cold, right? Yes, I can heal a cold. Um. So, yeah, no, it was okay. I, um, I... I actually, I really enjoyed how long it felt, but I also kind of hated that there was that health system. So every time I took a hit, like, there's no way to get that back. Your health uh, doesn't come back between levels, uh, between scenes in a level. Uh, they got the variety. You got to shoot bugs. You got a turret section. Uh, I played uh, all through the first, like chapter. There's three chapters and they have three scenes in each, I think. Maybe. We'll see. Um. Whoop. Hold on, my phone's going off. <laughs> Hello, this is the Apple Kid. I've just finished work on this great invention. Get over here. This thing is so cool. Uh, for reference, I had to walk all the way to the pencil to activate that and that kind of bummed me out that I died <laughs> the first time. Yeah, I know. Um... It was alright. I, I did get a bit bored and I didn't want to like shell all my money on it because I think I spent like, it was $2.20 a play and I think I plan spent like six plays on it so that was 12 of my dollars on that. Like, and I still didn't get to put in my name. Like I'm, I'm shelling credits, I'm going through this game and you still don't give me the decency to go through a name entry at the end? Come on guys. So, a little bummed at that. Um. The other game that I wanted to try out was, uh, I know my local time zone had a Guitar Hero Arcade, but, uh, unfortunately it was out of service. I couldn't, like, they wouldn't take money. Um, 
and the guitars were thrown upon the ground. I feel like kids pick them up and freaking whack each other with them, so done. I definitely had, like, there were there were so many little kids at the, um, at the time zone. Like, I'd, I'd be playing Daytona and there'd just be, like, a kid sits on the, the machine opposite me and, uh, just, like, starts tilting the wheel and then there was, like, a whack-a-mole game next to me and I'd just see a kid whacking that and I'm like, oh my gosh. Finally, the pencil eraser is ready. This will eradicate all pencil-shaped figures in just one second. It's incredibly powerful. Just don't use it near a shop that sells pencils. Here, it's yours now. Oh, I want fit. Gosh. Can I sell things at these people? Two clams. What is going on? What is going on? Ah. Uh... I guess I probably don't need the cold remedy because I can just heal my cold, so. So I guess it's that. And now I gotta wander all the way back. Uh, maybe I'll drop off my money. Could you, could you, uh, imagine destroying pencils? cause an artificial scarcity. <laughs> oh, you mean like graphics cards? Is, is Bitcoin not the pencil eraser of graphics cards? Uh, I don't know why my brain is blanking out on where that is. I know, I know. One day, one day. What is Bitcoin at now? Is it less than 30,000 or is it still back up? 31,837. Okay, it. Alright, alright. It actually did dip today. Alright. Um. The cards got put on the market afterwards. Yeah, I know. Uh. Oh, it's, it's, it's been lower. There was a very brief point where it apparently did go, like. I don't know, actually, if it's, if it's been, like, that low, but. All those 10 A's for cheap. It is such, it is such a shame that, um, like, it's still really, really obnoxious to get a graphics card right now. Um, I just don't understand, like, how, like, I, 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 sorry, I still don't understand where the worth of, of crypto is. Like, apart from just the theoretical investment of going, like, this amount of processing work should end with this amount of value. Like, that's all I can really see out of it. I don't see the actual, like, computation work to be particularly practical. And then, like, you know, the cost of the resources. It's like, well, you're buying these graphics cards to make a profit and you're doing no manual labor yourself. Seems a bit, seems a bit bizarre for me. So all I can think is that, like, mm, people are overvaluing it. I feel like the uh, the eight thousand uh, dollars per Bitcoin mark is probably where it should have always been. Capitalism is like that, though. Oh, exactly, exactly. I mean, the true value of things is never really known, and of course, the I guess perhaps it's just to me that the idea of Bitcoin doesn't seem as valuable to me, but the idea is valuable to other people, and that's that's the whole point of capital is that it's the idea, you know, like, like, what's the, what's the classic example of, a like, you can take, like, a ball of, or you could take, like, a, a roll of foil and scrunch it up into a ball, and that doesn't necessarily, um, that doesn't necessarily add value to it, but I can then wrap a sandwich, and then the act of putting both of those together is worth more than the act of the ingredients, because the idea of wrapping a sandwich has some capital worth, it's, it's valuable to certain people. So I think I think it's it's that. It's like, well, if people actually view the worth of something that is equivalent to thirty-two thousand dollars, for example, uh, how about let's use 
The pencil. I would have really kicked myself if I didn't pick that up. Well, that was easy enough. Look at all these bizarre icons. This is a rather abstract area, isn't it? And you still gotta fight these UFOs anyways. And he gave me a cold. Gosh darn. Giving me the cold every time. Ironically, this is a time where I don't have a cold. The cold actually, like, hurts. That's crazy. So I think I gotta wander through this place, like, quite a lot. Oh, we got big robots, and is this a new piece of music? Do I have to comment on the music? Suddenly, we now have this harsh, uh, kind of whole tone, you know, whole tone electronic kind of piece, given that, that futuristic robotic, but also, uh, unhuman kind of tone. Uh, whole tone is very popular with space music. Uh, what's a travel charm? Do I just use that? Maybe I should just eat a hamburger. I forgot what a travel charm does. Cool, actually. So that goes on the oh, that goes in the other, doesn't? No, that's no, in the body. There we go. And then I turned away, like an idiot. Gosh, the UFO is so mean. Gosh, so... And then he gave me a cold anyways. Cool. Am I gonna cop it here? I am gonna cop it here. Jeez. This is a remarkably brutal area, isn't it? Remarkably brutal. So... Yeah, I'm bummed I couldn't flex on the kids with, uh, Guitar Hero Arcade. Um... So, uh, maybe I'll ring up my time zone just ahead of time, next time I'm going in time zone. And, uh, ask them for the time and see if Guitar Hero is open this time, you know? You know what's really sad as well? Is that, like, that, you know... Well, not, you know, it's vintage, but, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's hard to, hard to come across guitars nowadays for a decent price. They start reaching into, like, the just $70 and I've been using them for 15 years kind of deal. Um, so they're, they're not exactly the, uh, and granted, I haven't, like, kept mine in the absolute best condition, but it at least plays, it at least goes. Uh, so if I go back out, can I get that butterfly? Because I'd really want that butterfly. Oh, there is. There is. Yeah. Stuck in the... Stuck in the wall. Let's get some more... Too far. Don't risk it with the mushroom. There we go. I feel like the effects of the butterfly is uh, going to be diminished over time as uh, 20 PP starts becoming a bit more obnoxious to to grind. But you know that's their fault for putting the butterflies here. That's their fault for putting butterflies in the game. 
I'm just gonna keep walking outside, keep using them, you know? Oh well. Uh, so the main reason why I wanted to segue is that there were a couple of other games I didn't try out. Uh, I noticed there was a Mario Kart Arcade. I noticed the the segue was that they have a Cruise and Blast machine. Uh, Cruise and Blast being a game that uh, is coming to the Switch soon. I'm curious how well they do it. If it's like the Cruise in USA, um, like N64 version when they came out two years after the arcade version. Um, be a bit weird because it's missing a lot of the graphical features of the arcade version and there goes all my pp again at least you don't have to fight these guys for like too much but jeez jeez they don't they do not give you slack okay long dungeon long dungeon long dungeon i am not fight i'm fighting one i'm fighting two. Oh boy can I just run away? Can I just go? Can I just... Can I just go? Can I just go? <laughs> Real talk. Games like this actually, like, make me hate, you know, running away from battles in games because... I want to get to that point where, like, you know, I, I'm one-hitting them, and they just run off. But it's also like, man, that, like, some of these encounters just eat my time. This is a butterfly here. Maybe I should rely on this one. This is a very, like, this is dungeon. This is just array of ground that eventually leads to a goal, you know? There's a lot capture inside, but it's got too much stuff, it's got too much stuff! I don't know, like, <laughs> I'm starting to get to this point where I was like, geez, like, uh, doesn't the croissant do, like, a bit of health? Oh, it's a bit more than a hamburger, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, well. There's a luck capsule. Uh, so I believe the luck capsule just is a permanent luck increase, isn't it? Yeah, so... Just use it. Give yourself that stat. What is going on over there, man? What is this? Just off-screen them. Just... Re-roll. Try and walk around them. I don't want to deal with that. I'm going to be able to kill this boss anyways. I wonder who made the bridge impossible. Why would someone do this? Crud. He said. Uh, yeah, I love, like, 90s JRPGs because they have this, like, just, like, unrelenting, like, <laughs> dungeon design. They will go. So, Bomb is just a enemy damage. A enemy damage that goes after one use. Because this is also a bomb, but I don't know if I really need another bomb. Oh my gosh, cool it with the enemies, jeez. Ah, <laughs> uh, guess what I'm using. Yeet! And they've caused me to catch a cold again. Seriously, this is a rather, like, brutal amount of damage as well. You gotta, you gotta cop just to fight these guys. Like, yeah, you can heal, but... You know, this is before we've got another party member. This is like, um... Dragon Quest II suffers from this. Where the game's an absolute slog until you get all your party members. There's a lot of... yeah... JRPGs are in this weird boat because there's a handful of JRPGs that get it so right and there's a lot that get it so wrong. And I, f I worry that that uh, Earthbound leans on the border where it's it's good. It's it's a good game, but it definitely like uh, has its irritating aspects. The shield thing kind of kind of annoys me as well, but 
Well, you could take him out. Oh, well. Uh, I guess it's also... It's also this tree thing. Okay, I feel bad for attacking this guy. Brain shock. <laughs> That's a wonderful effect, isn't it? Brain shock. What is that sound effect supposed to indicate? Oh, but he hits like a truck. And we can both miss and it doesn't really mean anything. I should be rather concerned about that. Brain shock. Maybe that paralyzes me and I've just got the, the one thing equipped. Ah! I'm... Oh, okay. Alright. That was a little terrifying, wasn't it? <laughs> just, just deals too much damage to me. Dude, the worst part is that, yeah, if I killed him second, I would have been dead. <laughs> Hands down. So I'm pretty- oh, cool. Uh, I guess I'll use life up again, like, right on the border, but sure. Uh, can I work with it? Well, I'd rather th just one of them. That's all fine. At least, like, one enemy on the map is one em enemy in the battle. Th this game, I think, really really cements the idea of enemies on the field. I'm not too sure if it's the first game. I don't really think Earthbound was the first game that did things, if anything. Like, does Earthbound get more attention because it's just as a character in Super Smash Brothers? I'm curious. Like, it is, it is the sequel to, uh, to another game. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It, it seems like the, the easy... What's the skip sandwich do? That gives you a spring... Oh, that also just... Let's you run. Well, let's use that. Because I feel like an actual helmet would be really useful. Or a, or a second helmet. There you go. Look at that. Great defense. People are probably yelling at me because I don't freaking invest in the invest in equipment in, in a Golden Sun in this game. So now someone's gonna attack me and there's like, oh, 9 HP. Actually, someone yelled at me <laughs> last week for that. Like, they were like, oh, you didn't buy the hat? And I was like, no, don't need it. I'm good, what are, you, what are you yelling at me? Don't yell at me, okay? Uh, I think I can go this way. Oh my gosh. Just zip zop zip it a bop all around. <laughs> And he gave me another cold. I hate him giving me the cold. Don't like it. Don't like it. I like how suddenly, like, this has gone into beating up robots and UFO things. Uh, I think it's perfect croissant weather. Just defeat him. Just get rid of him. Don't need him. Okay. Uh... So other than that, I think life has been going on as usual. I think there's a certain uh, degree of... Um... What's, what's something I should say? Uh... Controversial escalation in certain areas and games, and uh, I would just like to say that, you know, if people want to make cool games, you should give more power to them. I 
think there's a lot of people with great ideas and a lot of people with great implementations. And we shouldn't take uh, the entire judgment of a person's character to, um, to prevent others from doing that. These snakes suck! So, uh, no, oh, they're, they're one experienced snakes. They actually suck. Okay. And we're here. Happy, happy village. One day, Mr. Car Painter received a revelation. He now speaks the real truth. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to, like, hint at, like, conspiracy theory stuff, but, uh, Alright. You might misunderstand what I have to say, but Carpenter's voice affects one's minds like a hypnotist. You don't seem to understand, so I'll explain to you. When the world is changed to blue, a peaceful country can be established. Ooh, ooh, I didn't... You just want something. Okay, sure. One day, Mr. Carpenter... Oh, sure. Sh sh talk to that guy, right? <gasps> Excuse me, Taurus. I'm collecting donations to help protect the world from containments. Donate whatever you can. Yeah, sure. Uh, it, incredible. I can't believe people exist who have no money at all. Way to rub it in. Jeez. Look at that. It's a regular person. Mr. Carbonate communicates with the Divine, so he is able to deliver inspired messages. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ding, ding. I love a uh, different font as well. That's always good fun. But uh, yeah. Anyone play Far Cry th uh, Five? I'm blogging. Oh, yeah, I'm moving on anyway. There is a croissant. Do not need the croissant, apparently. Uh, people like fun mazes. <laughs> okay. What's in here? Skip sandwich? I really don't need that. Lots of sprites on screen, though, I'll tell you that. Paint attack. Turn attack, you know? Like... Ness is trying to tie us. Can I just talk to these guys? Yeah, okay. Just, just go fight him. Sure. So, this guy believes that paint is uh, the ultimate way of uh, cleansing oneself. Also, may I just say that the subject material of Earthbound just never ceases to amaze me how it just goes from like. You know, suburban households to robots to cult members. <laughs> Sussy Barkers. Sussy Barker. Okay. <laughs> and he's dead in one go. The crits are just like, oh, such a good effect. I love it. I'm pretty sure that was all the ones that fight you, right? Yeah, okay. Hi there. Hey! I screamed. Because I don't know what else to do. Look at this, man. Thanks for coming. I've been waiting for you. I need your assistance to help make the world blue and change it into a happy and peaceful society. Will you be my right-hand assistant? Yeah, sure. You fool! I have drawn you into my trap!
got moved it because you gave Mr. Car Painter some lip. Cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> just just yeet me out. Just just get me out of there. Where even am I? Where where have I teleported to? Ah, oh, back in there. Got it. And I've got to figure out the maze again. Uh, I was like this guy, wasn't it? And then, like, somewhere down here. There we go. I'm back into it again. Oh, well. So I wonder, like, who thinks of the stuff, you know? Will you be a right hand? No, no! If you don't want to be a right hand, my left would do you just fine. Just kidding! Your existence is a problem for me and my religion. Defy me and I'll end your pitiful game. I don't know why I didn't particularly, uh, think this through, did I? Hmm. Okay, well. Let's uh, keep wandering around. Is that just an enemy guy? He's just there. They're everywhere, jeez. Imagine, like, <laughs> reaching the end of a air quote dungeon, and then it's just like, just zapped out of existence. You turn back to normal. It's okay. What is normal in the sense of a cultist, man? Look at this guy, eh? Blue, blue! I wish for everything in this world to become blue. Now, listen up. Here's a story about a fresh egg. There are many footprints exist deep down in the East Cave. People call that place Lily Footsteps, and it makes them feel uneasy. That's what I'm looking for. Uh... I love this just like general unease you get with the music, uh, Sony Music Entertainment. The general unease you get with, uh, you know, like this, like, warbly, you know, like a kazoo where you're like... You know, like this just like raspy, just like harsh tone. Uh, but it's not like that harsh, it's, it's, it's wobbly, it's muddy, it's, uh, you know, gives a great- Thanks for the follow, Mirrod. Um, <laughs> it's, it's full of, um, just, like, mystery and, and unease. Um, and, uh, that's exactly, I guess, like, how you convey that tone, just with, you know, not staying on a pitch, or staying on a pitch that doesn't quite make the most sense. Birds. Are these easy birds? I don't know if these are the easy birds. Yeah, there must be easy birds. Hello there, it's very nice to meet you. Very nice to see someone play my favorite JRPG. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad that this is your favorite JRPG because I, like, I feel like this game is very iconic and quite, um, I guess, like, I, I wonder how many people did play this game when it came out. Me, as an Australian, I couldn't play it until 2014, I think, was when it actually came out in this country. Uh, are you Ness? Ness, I'm so glad it's you. I had a dream that a boy named Ness was my destiny. I know it's hard to believe, therefore I know you would rescue me. If you didn't come, I would have had to try and bust out of here. You can't open the door. You have to get the key from Carpenter. He's got it hidden away. I heard Carpenter can control lightning. In that case, you should wear this Franklin badge, okay? What do you want to get? Fried by lightning? Get rid of something so I can give you the Franklin badge. Man, they really want me to get rid of stuff, don't they? Uh... Like, I don't know. I guess I don't know. What is the couple of life noodles? That's... Revive, yeah. 
I love how that seems like a meme effect, but that actually is like all of the things you can do. Uh, yeah, they're not exactly my favorite. I love Pokemon and the Mother series equally. Uh, Pokemon's definitely pretty good as well. I, I would always say as a personal recommendation, um, if you really enjoy Pokemon, give Dragon Quest V, in particular V, a, a play, because that is the game that pretty much inspired... I think it, it, it is like... Is it the first game with the monster capture kind of idea? It's a bit rudimentary, but five also at the same time tells a tremendously great story. So, uh, you should join us, but I know you won't. I'm glad I joined. I'm not going to fight you, but these guys will. Later, potato. Sure. I, I guess I could just blow them up, can't I? Except it's just two coldness and a crow, so I don't know. Does the crow have sunglasses? Is that the idea that they're going with on that one? The crow is immune to it. Oh. Paint attack. But no, nah, it's such a vibe. Which Pokemon generation is this? I don't recognize it. You don't recognize that? It's Pidgey. Right there. It's a buzz. It's gotta be Pidgey, right? <laughs> I love how he's still kind of there as well. Like, he's just bailing hard. Um. So now, uh, Dragon Quest looks like a very well made RPG. It is. It is definitely. I think it's got its quirks. Um, and it's all that, oh, uh, it's the, which, which one's the Franklin badge? Franklin badge by keeping this one of your items. Oh, it just, it's, you just hold on to it. Okay. All right. Uh, no, they're definitely, they're definitely really, really well made. I, I think that they vary in quality a bit, but, um, I think if you like, if you really like quirky dialogue in games, uh, the translations, uh, from like the DS onwards for Dragon Quest uh, 4 all the way up, top notch. It's just full of like great like puns, um, you know, really fun characters, um, lots of lots of great settings, uh, lots of um, neat little episodic stories as well. I think that's always the best the best part of these Dragon Quest games is that like they never outstay their welcome because they keep feeling fresh over and over again um and there there's like they're very traditional gameplay wise um but in doing so i think they're actually like quite fun and orthodox on that one uh i have very good news i'll buy earthbound today on the wii U virtual console i've played earthbound on an emulator for a long time now but this time i want to show the support by uh for the series by buying game. oh that's a that's a great story i i actually i 100 percent like when i played way back when, uh, on my YouTube channel, I was actually sorely disappointed that I couldn't buy Earthbound for myself. Um, I have to, like, cause, cause in Australia, as I said, the game only ever came out when the Wii U version came out. It never got a physical SNES version, uh, and, um, yeah, it just, it just existed in this weird space where Nintendo would put, uh, you know, them in Smash, but they wouldn't. I don't know. I'm curious how big um, Earthbound was in uh, Japan. Because I, I never thought that these games, like, particularly took off. I don't know how well they took off in, in Japan. This is the battle that never ends. This is the battle that never ends. This is the battle that never ends. This is how it goes. Gosh, well, maybe, maybe I could finish the battle if I could hit anyone, you know? Instead, like, I'll get hit, like, a couple of times, and then... Mother 2 is very loved in Japan? They act, they, okay. Alright, come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's just, let's just take him out, let's just get rid of him. 
Let's just get rid of him. Okay, there's one left. There's one left. There's one, one guy left. There we go, look at that. Just, just, you know, seven enemies, why not? Look. Just crazy damage. That was what, two of them on the map? This is actually, like, this is a hotel moment right here. Uh, wherever is... which one was the hotel? Is there even an ATM here? This seems like a... It was a complete success, too bad America always has... <laughs> That's the mess everything up, literally. The fandom would be much bigger if America advertised Earthbound correctly. Um, I, I do 100% agree that there are games out there that just do not get the marketing love that they should. Or they're marketed in weird ways. I actually I spoke of one earlier in the stream. Um, which was the, uh, like the other way around where I, I thought the marketing kind of spoke way too highly of the game for what it was. Um... But I do agree that Nintendo's in a weird boat where they just, that sometimes they just don't market games in a weird way. JRPGs are tough. JRPGs are tough. Because like, even, even like, through all the E3 things, there were a lot of games that were spoken of that are just not... Uh, like, they, they show off JRPGs that just don't click. They don't really show why the JRPGs are, you know, a huge and unique. They showed off two different JRPGs in the Nintendo conference that were like a, you know, hit the enemy's weak point for massive damage kind of games. And I feel like they're both good games, but like, jeez. It's tough to, tough to talk about, I guess. Um, but on the flip side, I also feel like there's a lot of games out there that get like, you know, really good advertising and then they end up being rather dribble, let's just say, like, uh, I can guarantee there's bound to be a lot of games that were shown off at that E3 that people will play and go, oh, no, oh, no, that's not, that's not a good one. Um, which ones? I don't know. I think there were a few that just looked bad. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Thanks for coming. I've been waiting for you. I need your assistance to make the world blue and change it into heavy pieces. Also, I had a question. In this game, do hotels restore only your psychic points and health? Uh, it's both, I believe. I think it's both. Carpenter's lighting was lightning was reflected by the Franklin badge. Whoop! Into battle. So I don't have much health, so we're just gonna hope for the best. Or the Franklin badge can just deflect it back. Or the Franklin badge can just deflect it back. He does heal himself, and he, he can try, but I don't think he can really do anything, can he? Or I guess he can paint. Mr. Car Painter is really easy. I don't know, man. That was kind of tough. That was pretty tough. You see the many, many statue behind me. Since I got the statue, I've been doing peculiar things. Please forgive me if you can. I just wanted to have a normal life. I apologize to everyone. Here's the key to open the jail on the mountain cabin where Paul is being held. Take the key and go. Your backpack is full. You should take this even if you need to throw away one of your items. I, I, I'm in this bizarre spot where it's technically... Oh, I've... I have really been struggling with the inventory size on this one because... Like, I know, I know when you get another character you'll get all that stuff, but it's like, okay, ATM card, like, key item, key item, key item, uh... Key item, key item, like, oh... I've got five key items in my inventory, or six, because the, the bicycle as well. I've got six key items in my inventory, I've got three equipment, and I can only hold 14 things. Or seven key items. There's barely any room for anything. That's a crazy, like, low amount of inventory space. Sup, Naked Ramen? How's it going? We got some stragglers. I guess it's that if I really wanted to skip sandwich still, but sure. Sorry about everything. Let's be buddies.
What a horrible nightmare. I somehow woke up. Ness, let's be friends again. Please answer me. I promise to be good. Uh, okay. Yeah, how are you enjoying it, Naked Ramen? Ah, I lied. See you, sucker. <laughs> this combat was really strange, but so was everyone else. Okay. I got from the dream. And I remember it's on the other side of the fence. <laughs> Gotta watch out on that one. go. Oh, the birds coming at me. Gosh, these birds, they're dangerous birds. Pokey is the beginning of the end. Just got talking because of all the chat from someone here. Ah. I would like to throw away the cookie. You will leave the cookie behind. Put that cookie down. There's a bit of backtracking in this game, I feel, but not like not a ton. Are you hurt? Yes. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused you. Cool. No. <laughs> okay. Okay, sure. Uh, key to the cabin. There you go. Thank you, Ness. You're just like I imagined you would be. I'm sure that some people in Tucson are worried about me. Getting back there may be dangerous, but we can do it if we combine our strength. I'm able to use a little psychic power that is actually pretty deadly. I've killed multiple people with it. Sure. Cool. Follow join you. Ah! Gosh. Pictures taken instantaneously. I'm a, photog <laughs> I'm a photographic genius, if I say so much. Have fun using Paul. A PSI freeze is gonna carry a lot. Oh, exactly. I, I remember Paul being like such, like, you know, the carrier of the team. Until, you know, endgame, basically, but... Gosh, your teddy bear is so noticeable, Paula. So... I think Paula begins sucking. I think that's the gist. Uh, but Paula's got freeze, which is cool. Um, and you can pray, I guess. But the other nice thing is that because Paula exists, I have another inventory slot. I am so thankful. Uh, yeah, so there's this guy. I'm a change person. I'm no longer a believer in happy happyism. Anyway, the, I'm very curious about the place that lies ahead of you. So I believe we have to go there, but I'm just gonna see if I can heal up because I am on the lower side of of uh, the health. Wherever, wherever the, the thing has gone. Here's the cow. The cow is not blue anymore. The blue cow thing wasn't such a great idea after all, huh? Yes. So I believe if you go back to this guy... Greetings, Ness. Please forgive my lecture earlier. You are now welcome to stay. Free of charge. On your blue sheets. Good, good on him. Good meme. Uh, someone keeps pinging me. In my opinion, Paula should have started at level 10. It's not fun to have and grind for her to reach level 20. Yes, yes, that that is something I find kind of annoying is that she is full on in the sucky territory. Like, look at those stats. You got 37, you got 25, and then two. You at least start with a PK ability, but I feel like that's gonna absolutely drain your, your stats, so yeah. I guess I could give her nothing because all these goods, like... She doesn't equip any of this, does she? No. Mr. Baseball Cap and the... That's the only other piece of equipment I've got. Okay, let's see if we can buy... Buy anything.
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting stuck on the, the walls. Rip food sand. Oh, oh well. Uh, so I believe we got one one more dungeon to to go. You can buy our frying pan if you don't have if you have enough money. But I mean, I don't even think uh, Paula's supposed to be a physical attack. I don't think she is. Just fight this mole fella. I'm also just gonna uh, relaunch my chat because my chat always flips out after a while, so refresh cache, and that should be fine. Alright, cool. Ah, the teddy bear. She did do 46 damage. Sorry, 1 damage. Sorry, wrong number. There we go, beat that guy up. She's now level 2. She's now level 3. She's now... Realizing fire. Oh, baby. She's now level 5! Cool. I guess I could just leave and fight that enemy again, can I? There he is. I feel like that'll, that'll at least get Paula up to a more decent, you know, health amount. Or, Ness can just miss, you know. She can't do any damage, like, until she basically builds up her PP, though. Can't she? Like... And you can just smash him. Cool. Paula's level is now level 6. She used a smart cookie, and she realizes how to shield people. Cool. There's another mole. You should definitely equip Paula with some accessories to increase the defense. Paula's defense sucks, and it's very easy for enemies to inflict mortal damage to her. That is true. I guess here's a question. Where... Where can I get money? Like, right now. Because I really don't want to just wander all the way back to Tucson. Even though I know they say so. I don't want to wander back to Tucson. When... Like, really all I've got to do is work my way through here. Um, so, I need money, and then I need a place to buy things. So, is there a shop here? Or is it actually, like, outside? Ah, uh, that was not mortal damage. Probably could, though. 100% <laughs> can, can kill Paula. Uh, you can get money by defeating enemies. Uh, your money is stored in the ATM card. Yeah, that's the bit that kind of, like, irks me, is that, like, I would like to buy things, but... Like, I gotta find a cash machine. There's no, there's no cash machine anywhere. So I'm in this, this, uh... This spot where... You know, I can't exactly, uh... Continue on. Well, let's just, let's just keep going. Let's just see how we go. What's down the bottom here? Another one of these moly moles. And Paula is nearly dead, yet again. It's because she, she can't do anything. I guess she's just... And the teddy bear is gone. But she's level 8 now. She's got that. And she's realized PSI Thunder. Uh, look through our paint, I found some masterpiece. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'd say masterpiece, but I also wouldn't exactly say paint on that one. I feel like there's a lot of teething issues on, uh, a lot of older, um, RPGs. Um, like, a as much as I just praised Dragon Quest V, it's like, the, the DS version? Irons out a lot of the, a lot of the kinks on pacing. The... Yeah, like, SNES games, they knew that they had to add some, some time here and there, so, fair enough. I don't think it's too bad, like, was that really, like, the grinding I did? I fought, like, an enemy three times? It's not too rough. 
<laughs> I've seen some horrendous stuff, like, uh, Dragon Quest 1 is a one. Oh, Final Fantasy 2! Sorry, my bad. Final Fantasy 2, the game that, uh, like, rewards you for not playing it. Because they didn't- they decided to play up the, uh, the experience system so hard that it actually rewards you for killing enemies- killing the beginning game enemies. <laughs> because that- everything's based on how many turns it takes you to kill things. So as long as you're fighting enemies that don't kill you, then you can control the rate at which you gain experience. It's so stupid. And yet, they designed the game to still require you to grind it anyways. The ball's in your court. And you still have to go for it. We got bats. Let's watch. Uh, I guess I can just get up. Okay, so... I believe we've got, uh... Everyone? Thunder is every everyone, isn't it? But I don't know if it hits everyone hard. Or it just hits someone. That? Surprisingly good for, like... Yeah, actually, that was surprisingly good for, like, 3 PP. Jeez, I didn't even realize. Uh, Mr. Bat as well. Welcome to Earthbound's early game club. We slaughter moles from dungeons. Pretty simple, Imo. How did I beat him on that one? What? What? How did I... Sure. Sure, I guess. I'll take it. He's sizing up. He's feeling strange. Oh, Nasus level 20. I always get a bit irked of, uh... Characters that, uh, jump in, in levels. So now he's got life up beta. Alright, this is legit a point where you start to, you, you want to clear off a group of enemies. These guys don't seem like they're too rough though. So I can do fire to a row. Yeah, okay. Oh, they hit you. They hit you a bit. And that's kind of hit anything for the life of him. And everyone's still alive. Sure. We'll just do it again. Uh... <laughs> yeah, okay. Alright, that was an interesting way of going about things. Just, like, disable Ness and then proceed to take yourself out. Sure. Baller is now level 10. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only one in my school who gives a shit about retro gaming and isn't like 99.9% .9 of the students in there who care about TikTok and Warzone. You got no one who cares about Fortnite? What? How does no one in your school like Fortnite? Come on. <laughs> nah. I... I... I agree. I... I feel like there's probably people out there though. Who secretly do really like some of the old classics. Um, Fortnite's pretty dead in my school. Is Fortnite actually like that dead? I'm not with the- I'm not down with the kids on this one, so I don't know. Oh, I guess the bat did make it. Um, let's take out the bat first, uh... I'll just- just hit Thunder. So Thunder just hit someone. No one can stop saying Among Us. <laughs> I, I, I didn't say anything about Among Us, I'll just say that. If people start saying it, it's gonna happen. What are these cursed attacks? And Paula is 100% gone. I can attempt to revive her. It ain't happening. Not at that rate. Not at that rate. So now I get this wonderful screen. And also, like all great JRPGs, I don't believe you gain experience for being dead. Which is kind of annoying. I don't think there's any items that... Is there magic that, uh... Revives you or no? Like, if you're dead, like... Now you're in that fun boat where, like... What do you do? Because, like, healing... Healing is, a uh, 
healing. Oh, actually, I think like the last healing, maybe. Alright, not gonna lie, Among Us memes are way funnier than repetitive, uh, oh, sorry, Among Us memes are way funnier than repetitive Among Us memes. But it's starting to become annoying real quick. It's been literally six months, and this meme won't, uh, die already. I feel like I can just commit to the end. I feel like I don't need Paula. Just gonna watch out, man. You gotta watch out for those bears. Okay, go, go, go. Because that's the thing, if Paula's not really doing anything... Whoa, 59. Like, I, I feel like they've designed this area knowing that you've got two characters now, so they're gonna start hitting a bit harder. Eh, she'll get experience later. Okay, here, here's, a, here's a question. I don't know how to revive her, except by walking not only just to the hospital, but all the way back out because there's no ATM. Is there an ATM anywhere here? I don't- I don't think there is, and I really don't want to undo all this progress just because... ...there's that. I'd rather just go and head first, see if- see if I can win, and if I can't, then I actually die and I go all the way back. I don't have 200 bucks! I keep saying this, I- I don't have money! Or I could do that, this is the easiest way to- to leave. Uh, so this puts me in Tucson, doesn't it? Yeah. Because there's no... There's no ATM. There's no ATM. I'm winging this whole trip with no ATM. Like, I, I, I don't mind this idea of, like, you know, banking your cash, but it's like, man, that's banking the ca I guess I could tell... You tell your mum that, don't you? It's my fault on that one, isn't it? Alright, how about, let's go gutsy. Well, at this point, it's safely confirmed that Earthbound takes place in America because healthcare is expensive. <laughs> Working part of the first coming. Uh... Wait. Oh, I thought you could talk to your... Yeah, yeah. Dang it. Why didn't you tell me about Lays? Yeah, but she she's right next to you or something. I have to go now. So I believe this, uh... Yeah, this is an item storage, uh, system. So you can call the phone. And then you can, uh... I don't know, actually. I don't know who comes by. Oh, there they go. <laughs> sure. Exception is that guy uh, who buys a mushroom once you get shroomed. Yeah, there is that guy. There is that. Um, where's the hospital? It's down south, isn't it? No, it's up top. It's up top. I guess while I'm also here, I can go to the department store, can't I? And buy some goods. I have a person like that in our hospital. Oh, it's only a hundred bucks here? It's not two hundred bucks? Okay, sure. Ugh. This is the Rockabilly music that you can listen to Unless you live in any country That's not Japan according to Sony Music Entertainment I'm gonna keep ripping into it uh, Hold on, I I'm, I'm looking this up was there an ATM and I'm just being dumb the whole time? 
Happy Happy Village ATF. Where's the phone? In the drugstore. Okay. The cow out front is a hostel. What? Okay. Honestly, a really good trick for getting infinite money would be one where you get yourself shroom multiple times and then sell the mushrooms to the guy in the hospital. That's very time consuming. Uh, oh my gosh. Jeez. Beat up them cops. I, yeah, I've definitely found that, like, there's, there's, um, like, and, and granted, like, there's a, a child. Hey, two children. Two children. Uh, one of which can set fire to them with their mind. Not, not at that very moment. Also, that's a deranged police officer. Although there's a lot of police officers that beat you up, so I don't know what's going on there. So yeah, so I... Me not being able to find the ATM, because a lot of these places look the same, I've now got to wander all the way through. At, at least I can kill these really quick, but jeez. Jeez, it's that point, isn't it? That was a brutal death as well. Just like, jeez, you gotta go through like two whole dungeons on that. Smash players always say PK Fire Guy while he's actually the PSI Rock Knight. He's the PSI Sleep Guy for me. Sleeps on me. Just don't fight everything on the way. Jeez. Oh my gosh. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not fighting three of them. I'm fighting three of them. Gosh. Running away doesn't work in this game. I swear. I swear. Running away does not work in this game. And now I've got to shell more money. Thanks, game. Appreciate it. Like, I understand the penalties of running away is very minimal. So, of course, you know, the rate of which... Doing that is probably something to, to not have to worry about. Sorry. As in the, the the rate of which you can run away is found to be not good because, well, of the cost, but seriously, I've never had more issues of running away than in, in various JRPGs. This is definitely one of the harsher ones. I don't know what the rate is. Does anyone know what the rate of... Uh, like, the rate that you can run away from battles? Because, like, I really don't want to fight these guys. Not how I'm going to have no, no PP as well. Honestly, the fact that Ness doesn't even use PSI insert name, but it's canonically rocking makes me wonder what's going on in Sakurai's head. Um... I could say a few things, like Samus never using the power bomb. I can't leave! I can't leave this! I can't leave this. What is the? Hold on. Why well, I'm looking this up? Earthbound, uh, runaway rate. I swear. I swear. What is the rate? Is this is this running away? Command in the Mother series in Earthbound, the run command can only be used in battle. By the way. <laughs> the worst part is that I'm about to get killed by this because it's not like I've got any goods that particularly 
I'm gonna save me on this one. I've got the cookie. Got the cookie. That's it. I've got no more healing. I've got the exit mouse. That's it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Just commit. At least Pokemon learn from Earth Mouse is safe. Hold on, so in battle, the speed statistic of the fastest party member determines the chance of running away. Uh... The wiki says, at least in the original game, uh, so the NES game, it was a 50% chance. Uh, there also was a, a, a um, PSI ability, which gave you a 100% chance, but of course you use PSI on that one. Oh my gosh, don't do this to me. Okay, alright. Legit, I just cut that one a bit fine, didn't I? <laughs> I cut that one a bit fine, didn't I? <laughs> it's a bit of a, bit of a close one, isn't it? Just be like, ah, yes, yeah, so let me drop down to one health, pick up the butterfly such that I can actually heal myself. Yeah, okay. There you go, the second one, just in case. I guess I could use my cup of noodles, but I don't know, I feel like just saving that for an actual battle, you know? Alright, so I'm in the village, and then I go down to... down to the bottom? So this guy, this guy lets me sleep. He lets me sleep. He lets me just go for it. Okay. And he had... he had a phone? Was that, was that the gist there? I don't see a phone, I do not see a phone at all, unless it's a lamp. Nah, okay. So maybe there was one up the top here? Was it like this house? Does this house have a phone? Actually, hold on. Who, who was the hospital? Someone was the hospital. As well. I think it was the guy in this house. Because I need, I need Paula to come back, so I actually need that one. Uh, the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 110. Yeah! <laughs> come on. Alright. How about let's just withdraw my cash and then put it all back in <laughs> at the end. Because I feel like this place sells things. So does this place have an ATM? It does, it does. And it also has a phone. Alright, so I'm just going to say I'm blind as a bat because I definitely feel like I had walked in here and then I just was like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know where to get money. And there's a phone, there's literally a place I could have saved, I could have saved me a lot of time of wandering back to that place, and instead I was like, nah, I got this. So I gotta go back here, see Paula, still unconscious, yep, now you're back. Okay, all good. At least you're back on health, unless it's that. Alright, so then we go back up to the top. We get uh, items, right? So we get a frying pan. That was what you wanted. That's a polar item. You're gonna equip it. There you go. Cool. What's another item you get on a? Maybe the ribbon. 
Oh, geez, yeah. I don't know how good the copper bracelet is, but we'll just go for it. Yeah, okay. There you go, so now let's look at the stats. Well, you're still slow. Faster than this, I guess. Uh, and then if I go to equip. I guess the copper bracelet probably goes to arms. Maybe I'll give that to Ness as well. There you go. That'll be a good, good boost. And then let's go over to the machine and call the dad and he's donating and he's now got zero dollars in the bank. He's created a record. I'm, I'm still going on. I want to clear off that dungeon. I am... I'm gonna show that dungeon his boss. I'm gonna absolutely not trust me holding on to money. There we go. Mondo mole killing time. Exactly, exactly. I'm sure that mole his boss after being slightly mean to me, working my way up to him. <laughs> ah. Well, at least Paula can deal some damage, I guess. Well, at least Ness can deal way more, so... Just... I know, Paula's supposed to use magic, I know. I, I find it's a bit weird that, like, Ness... I mean, a lot of the RPGs, generally, like, your first character is a bit of a jack-of-all-trades character, but, like, Ness seems to, like, lean so heavily into the healer role, like, to start off. Uh, it's basically I committed die minutes ago, but... Me be back. Mind the bloody bears worse than the boss. Um, they definitely gave me some big hugs earlier. She's already got freeze beta, bro. She's already going into it. I keep forgetting, like, how the, um, I guess, like, how intentional the level progression in this game is, because my brain was thinking, like, it ends at around level 50. But, I don't know, like, Ness is already level 20. <laughs> this is only, this is only the second, uh, Sanctuary spot, isn't it? It's only the second stream. Uh, this is a perfect opportunity to catch fire. Oh, wait, you can't set him on fire, can you? Uh, Ness is like a paladin, big hits and heals. Uh, they're hard only because you don't want to waste your PSI against them. Yeah. I say as I'm using PSI against bats, but sure. Paula still doesn't have that much health, like, the more I think about it, but... Uh... There you go. Beat him up. At least, okay, if there's one thing this game does have, a lot of, of, quite a number of RPGs back in the day had the thing where if you targeted an enemy and then the enemy died, you would, like, not attack anything. And it's a bit of a mean, a mean thing nowadays. It's, I don't see too many JRPGs keeping that one. They're like, yeah, just, just, we'll pick something. Um, or they get really nice and they let you, um, like, they they only require you to pick an action when it's their turn. Um, so, something like... Uh, my brain's thinking Final Fantasy VII. I don't think that's the one. Uh, RNG's bitch. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bit of that. Alright, let's, let's get to the part. I feel like games that let you control the amount of randomness that you end up having to use is generally it leans into the, the nice camp because then it means that you've got a baseline like strategy as well um because uh what's what's a game that's like that pokemon's pretty good at that one pokemon's pretty good it's got a lot of a lot of moves that will always hit or at least at 100 percent uh once you once you start chucking you know like sand attacking there like oh i don't know <laughs> things on things on stilts at that point i don't know what's going on there 
Um, but, uh, in general, then you can also go, oh, like, I'll have crit increasing moves. Uh, my personal favorite's Infernape. Ooh, Infernape's pretty good. Alright, I'm gonna walk past this bear and he's not gonna see me. Cool. Oh, there's a few bats. There's a few of them. Uh, this is definitely a fire moment right here. He's sizing up, but he's attacking. I'm firing my bats. I feel like that's good enough to... Oh, that also confuses... Oh, no, no, they're already confused. Eh, this ball is dealing some damage to the bashes now. There we go. Let's get rid of them. Don't want them bats. There's a lot of level ups in this game as well. Like, you, you go through them quick. Jeez, yeah. The, baddie, the baddies are oh, Mother 3 or 2. Good old Mother 3. So, fun fact, I have not played any other Earthbound. It's just, or, or Mother. It's only been these ones. Um, I guess I could do, or this one, sorry. Uh, and this one from way long ago. Way long ago. Now I feel like I'm overleveled. And I've got, like, actual equipment. That's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Like, and, and, and something I find is just bit from Wu. It's about to eat the bat. Why is it allowed us to keep that one in? Sure, okay. Uh, so I suppose... No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I've played this game before. It's fine. It's all good. Ah... Uh... There's a PSI Caramel in this. Oh, what is, what is the PSI Caramel? Is that a stat increase or is that a... Replenish. Okay. So, kind of. Not really. You finally got it. This is the second your sanctuary location. But it's mine now. Take it from me if you dare. Alright, so the mole is probably gonna kill me really hard. But I feel like I could probably... Get him with a paralysis. Uh, it's completely legal to play Mother 3. Is it completely legal? I mean, it's completely legal to play anything on an emulator. It's just where you get the game from. That's the that's the question there. Uh, let's see. I could do the shield to one of us, or I could just I could just go in. Fifteen. Fifteen. That's not worth it. Game numb. Uh, I guess we just beat him up and then, I don't know. Thunder. <laughs> the freeze ain't working. What's the point? What's the point in Polar if, like, <laughs> you can't do anything to him? Feels like fire? Why is the mole, like, allergic to fire? 34 is not, like, it's a bit, but it's not, like, a ton. He's definitely just, just taking it, but... He, he heals... Use PSI sleep. Oh, he's, he's, he's... Oh, wait, he's still paralyzed. Okay, so I just use PSI sleep. I, I mean, Paula can't do a thing right now. Paula literally can't do anything right now. So, I don't know, just, just pray. <laughs> Hope for the best. I wasn't really expecting that, but sure. Oh, I'll just defend. Paula doomed us all. Yeah, it causes us all to sleep. Jeez, Paula. There you go. Kick that mole in the face. There you go. So Paul is leveled up. There you go. And through here, we have uncovered. Oh. Oh. 
got some music. Music which is, reminds me of the musical jukebox. The one that Ness has acquired. A jukebox reminds Ness of his home. <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter at this point in the sanctuary. Vision of a baby in a red cap. Was he come out of the womb with a cap on? I have replaced his hat already, so... Ah. Uh, uh, so like all good dungeons... I assume the enemies uh really afraid of the fact that I just beat the giant mole boss and yet and yet they get incredibly stuck <laughs> on walls so let's just get out of here so and yeah I was that close to getting up to the top because I didn't have any items on Paula, she got absolutely wrecked, and then because Ness was just a bit replacing the cord on with a cap. Oh my gosh, jeez. Genius. Uh, so I'm pretty sure there's nothing left to do here, so we'll just wander all the way back. Um, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, there's a fair bit of walking in this game. Of just like, you gotta go from point A to point B. Uh, they at least, I believe, give you the... Oh, wait, downs, downs enemy. Whoop. Hey, hey, UFO, you're crossing the line there. Also, the thing that enemies uh, get away once you beat the Guardian is really cool. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's only in the dungeon that they're in, though, so of course, because I've got to cross here. It's definitely, you know, work. And I gotta fight the tree. The happy tree. The happy tree that 100% catches fire when you beat him up. But at least at this point, I'm now getting into the uh, the comfortable health territory. You know, when, when, you, when you're able to start, you know, like healing and, and juggling between some things. That's one thing I always find is that the dynamic of an RPG changes quite a bit over time. Look at this guy, he's a legend. Blue, blue, oops, I won't say it again. Fix the bin. Uh, the bridge is a side of apology. I'm just trying to help. Good on him. Come on, UFO. Come on. I'm a fire in my laser. Oh. Well, goodbye, UFO. I knew him well. I didn't know him at all. So There's a lot of enemies on the way, jeez. Maybe it would have been quicker to just like... Put my money in the... Oh no, I saved it the, <laughs> the last place. Also, in my opinion, the thing of RPGs taking place in ancient times is getting really old. Uh, I mean... Yeah, the, the fantasy setting is always a, a common place. Um, I'd say that there's like a strong number of RPGs in science fiction future. Modern day times and bizarro modern day times is an interesting one. And, and that's something I think gives Earthbound its character is that it can play on being uh, like a quirky game of the now. Because it, I mean, because of the setting. Whereas, like you know, as, as I keep mentioning, a Dragon Quest, it's like, well, Dragon Quest takes place in sword and magic fantasy land. There's definitely that uh, modern US. Um, yeah, th I I would still say there's a lot of RPGs that yeah take place in that future. You got your your classics, your, your System Shock, your Deus Ex, um, even your new ones like your Cyberpunk, um, Shadowrun. I don't know why Shadowrun popped on my head on that one. Uh, I feel like I can do a bit of healing and then pick up that butterfly and then I don't have to go to the, to the inn. To the inny. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other RPGs off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of especially like a, a Japanese one that doesn't take place in, I guess, Pokemon. Uh, but 
Yeah, I think there's a there's a solid and you got shroomed. You got shroomed, son. Come on. Come on, Paula. How'd you get shroomed, son? Alright, well back here in 2077, what makes someone a criminal stating your opinion? Uh one day I'll legitimately play Cyberpunk. Uh and I'll be curious as to whether it lives up. Chrono Trigger? Yeah, Chrono Trigger technically does not take place exclusively in in uh, Ancient Swords time. Chrono Trigger gets a huge free pass, though. It gets a free pass because it's a good game, not, <laughs> not, not also just because it, it changes its time period. Here's a question. Uh, does Final Fantasy 7 count? Because 7 and 8 take place in a... Not quite steampunk, because it's not punk, but... Like, an age of technology. But, like, not quite computers. Like, they've got trains. So, I'm curious if that one counts. Um... Not, yeah, I'd imagine there's actually, there's probably a lot of, um... Actually, one of my favorites, uh, Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. Ever play Secret of Evermore? I have not played Secret of Evermore. I've definitely heard of it, but I haven't played it. Um, but Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky is one that I absolutely love playing through, and maybe one day I will actually play it on stream instead of, uh, two hours on YouTube and then call it a day on that. Uh, speaking of call it a day, I'm gonna call the dad, and he's donating more money. Well, uh, Final Fantasy VII is not uh, too distant dystopia, alternate reality, more like. Yeah, kind of. But it's still like it's not. It's not past. It's not fantasy in that regard. So a great team. Well, just turn the power off instead of just pressing reset. All right, and and with that, I hope you guys had a good stream. Uh, I know I have. Uh, walking back and forth. Paula needs grinding. You know the huge. Uh, so with that, thank you guys very much for watching. Um, yeah, if you're if you're on Twitch now, which you you guys are in the chat, follow is always good. I always stream at the same time, and thank you very much for the follow, for the follow. Uh, I'm also on YouTube, youtubecom Bando. I just upload these vods, but maybe I'll upload my own stuff. Yeah, no, it's been good. I um, yeah, no, I've definitely enjoyed your insights. A uh, bit of the running commentary, and always some chat is always good to, to bounce off and just like you know go off that. So that's always good. Um, I don't particularly have a lot of like, big news or announcements, uh, other than I'll just be streaming every week, streaming some more Earthbound. Um, and, uh, other than that, uh, oh, today's, yeah, yeah, I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, today's the solstice, so if you're in the US, or if you're in Australia, feel glad that the days will get longer from here on out. Actually, no, if you're in the US, they're getting shorter. Ha, 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 ha.